sing It Is Well With My Soul. And I hope you can sing along with us as we sing this good song. Peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my Lord Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Satan should buffet, though trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate. And has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul.
came in. That was a high song, definitely. <laughs> but thank the Lord we got through it, amen. And I'm glad I can say it is well with my soul, and I trust this morning it's also well with your soul. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, maybe you can type them underneath, and people can maybe pray them uh, as we share them this week. Uh, this has been a difficult time for all of us, I know. It's been very difficult not to see your faces in person and to meet and have fellowship and hugs and uh, lots of cake, and food, which we all enjoy, and our tea and our coffee. And uh, But this can be an opportunity for us to extend the fellowship, to come into your home and to speak with you personally. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do more of this through the week, uh, perhaps a devotional uh, time we can arrange, maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. We can have a short devotional or prayer time. And I would encourage you to send prayer requests to me. Uh, if you can send them either through the Facebook account or to pastor at BibleBaptistGlasgow.com and I'll get it that way and we'll look forward to that. And uh, I have been talking to some of you this week and there have been some prayer requests uh, and uh, the Lord has certainly been moving in people's lives. And this is a good opportunity for people to do that. So this morning we're going to sing another song. We're going to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And, you know, you might have many friends in your, your world today, but the best friend you could ever have, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So I hope you encourage you to sing along with us. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield. soul as fair. Amen. Praise God. You can find a solace in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, as I said, we've been quite well here. Uh, healthy. Holy. Trying to seek the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're looking forward to the time we can get back together in normal times where we can gather and sing the songs of Zion and, and uh, hear the preaching of the Word of God. And as I said this morning, we're going to go to Psalm 77. And we're going to ask a question, is God's mercy clean gone? Is God's mercy clean gone? 
So if you have your Bibles with you, I would encourage you to uh, get your Bible and turn to Psalm 77. Um, one of the things I did want to mention and to note is that I haven't changed a few things on the church website, uh, BibleBaptistGlasgow.com. And one of the buttons I've added there is a donate button. I've been asked a few questions by people. How can they continue to give offerings and uh, send that to the church? Uh, well, there's a donate button on there. And if you'd like to use that to send your offerings, uh, that would be great. Uh, obviously, we're not using the building anymore. So the main reason for having the offerings would be to go to support uh, our missions, such as Brother Kelly and Brother Grant and their ministries. And so if you continue to send that, we'll be able to continue to send it to them. So you pray about that. Uh, I know electronic is not the most ideal way of doing it, but uh, if you can send it that way, or if you prefer to do it bank to bank, if you message me, I can give you my bank details or the church bank details, and you can send it in that way, and just so we can continue to do the things we've done. We've been able to do that this month because we built up a little bit of a reserve, and we can hope to continue to do that. So if you go to the church website, uh, BibleBaptistGlasgow.com, and you'll find the button Donate, and you can do that through PayPal, and I'm sure the Lord will bless that. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 77. Psalm 77, and we're going to read the entire Psalm. In Psalm 77, of course, from the King James Bible. And uh, that is the perfect Word of God, and we use that. Amen. We believe it's the God's Word. And it's all about seeking the Lord in the day of trouble. So Psalm 77 verse 1 says, To the chief musician, to Jethun, a psalm of Asaph, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord, my sword ran in the night, and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. The whole is mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine heart, with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of all of, all of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Thou ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth he, his promises fail forevermore? You know, I'm thankful this morning that I can say that God keeps his promises. Amen? God keeps his promises. He doesn't change. In this psalm, we have Asaph, who is very troubled about what's going on around him. He's complaining. He looks at the trouble and he says, what's going on? Where's God? Has God gone on holiday? Has God gone away? Thank God he knows exactly what's going on. And one of the things I want to tell you this morning is that God is still on the throne. He's still in charge. He knows what's going on. All the gods of the things of this world have gone away. The pubs have closed. The football's closed. The sports are closed. The gatherings are closed. But I want you to tell this morning, God has not closed his door. His door of salvation is still open. His ear is always hearing the prayers of his people. He's still God, and he's still the one who's able to lead us during this time. You know, David said in the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
And the Lord is still our shepherd. The Lord hasn't gone away. The Lord hasn't stopped being merciful. The Lord hasn't stopped answering prayer. He's still God and he's still able to hear our prayers. Amen. Thank God for that. And in our psalm, Asaph is literally crying out to God for help. He's emotionally broken and spent. He's in distress. He says in verse 2, In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. You know the best thing you can do when the trouble's here? Seek the Lord. Get closer to Him. This is not the time to look at circumstances, to look at troubles, to look at the things that are going on and be concerned. It's time to seek the Lord. As I said in that verse I quoted this morning, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If we seek the Lord... His righteousness will be added unto us, amen, and He will be there for us. And He's always there for us, amen. Thank God for that. But it's in the day of trouble. You know, sometimes it takes trouble for us to get looking heavenward, amen. Sometimes the, it's through our, our difficulties, our trials, our circumstances. That's when we begin to seek the Lord. And sometimes that's how God sends us troubles, amen. That's why sometimes God sends us trials, so that we can refocus and reprioritize our life. Nobody's caring about the pub anymore. Nobody's caring about the bingo anymore, the lottery, global warming. Nobody cares about that anymore. Everyone's scared of touching anyone, of being around anyone. But the one person you can be around and not worry about getting a virus is the Lord Jesus Christ. You can draw as close to him as you need to or want to draw, and he'll always be there for you, amen. Just have to reorientate this thing because it keeps falling down, amen. This is the good thing about live things. It tends to move a lot quicker, amen. So as I was saying, it was during the trouble he began to look for the Lord. And he began to remember the old times. He remembers the old days. He says, Thou holdest mine eyes waking, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient time. You remember the good times when we could go to church? Yeah. We, could, we could sing. We could meet each other. We could hug. We could enjoy a cup of tea, a coffee, uh, some nice Polish uh, wonderful cooking. Remember the good times? Remember the times when we could witness for the Lord and we could tell people about Jesus and you could meet them in the streets? You know, God has been good to us in the past and God has looked after us in the past and he will continue to do so, thank God. He's still the same God today as he always was. His word is still true today as it always was. The Bible says in Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. The Lord knows what's going on, amen. He's completely aware of the circumstances in which we live. And then he begins to remember his songs in the night. You know, there's only one God who gives you songs in the night. When your family, your friends, your country, and everyone deserts you, thank God the Lord is still there. He's still, you can commune with your heart. You can get closer to Him, and you can make diligent search of your spirit. You know, the psalmist said, Search me, O God, and know me, and try me, and see if there be any iniquity and way of unrighteousness in me. You know, this is a time where we can get together with God, when our families can come together and do devotions, when we can witness to our unsaved loved ones and tell them what's going on, thank God we've read the Bible, we know what's going on, amen. But he begins to ask six rhetorical questions about the Lord to help him to focus himself on exactly how his solution to his problem could become. So in verse number seven he says, Will the Lord cast off forever? Will the Lord cast off forever? You know, Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. You know, the doors, God's door is never shut. We were going to the store just the other day and, and we were told as we went in there that the store hours had changed. Uh, we were down at our local Asda and they said, you know, the store is closing at 8 o'clock tonight. And every night it will close at 8 o'clock. And that's unusual because that store is usually open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But you know, God's door is always open. God's salvation is always open. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That door is still open. We're going through some difficult times. The Bible says all these are the beginning of sorrows. There's some very terrible things up ahead. And if you read your Bible, you'll know about them. 
But God's door of salvation is open right now. If you're not saved, you can come to the Lord and ask Him to forgive you, call out for mercy, and He will save you and give you eternal life. Is His mercy clean gone? Will the Lord cast off forever? Is God done with us? Is God done with Scotland? Is this, is this the end? No, God has got more days ahead of us. God is not finished with us. If He was finished with us, we'd be in heaven, amen? Will He be favorable no more? You know, I thank God for what He's done in our lives in the past, for the mercy and the grace He's shown every day. Think of all the times God has answered your prayers. Think of all the times God has been good to you. You know, the book of Romans says that it's the, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And think of how God has been favorable to you and I. We've, we've, we've enjoyed His benefits. We've enjoyed His blessings. And uh, right now we can go through this knowing the Lord is, will be favorable again. Is His mercy clean gone forever? Is, is, has He stopped being merciful? Has God stopped answering prayers? No, of course not. God's mercy is still true. God's grace is still there. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. God's mercy is still there. God's mercy for the child of God is still there. He's still merciful to us. He's still gracious to us. Even though we go through trials and it's difficult sometimes, even though it's dark, David talked about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. When it seems like we're hedged in, when it seems like we're uh, locked down and it's dark, God's mercy is still there. He hasn't forgotten to be merciful. And this is a good one in verse number 8. Doth his promise fail forevermore? The book of Hebrews tells us that the Lord Jesus said, said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Do you really think God has stopped being God? Do you really think that God has stopped his promise to be with us? You know, you might be in a house all by yourself and you may not have been out very much this week or even at all. But God is still there with you. God is still able to hear your prayers and to answer those prayers. His unfailing love will not vanish. His care for the child of God will not vanish. His promises will not fail. Hebrews 13, 5, 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Is his mercy clean gone? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? God doesn't take a holiday. God doesn't go anywhere and forget to be gracious to his people. He cares for us every day. Even in these difficult times, he still cares for us. He knows our situation. He knows our trouble. Even though it seems like we're going through the darkest time we've ever gone through, God is still there. Thank God I know what's going on. Amen. I've read the Bible from cover to cover. I know what's happening. The devil has a short period of time. Uh, I believe the Lord is coming back very soon. Amen. I mean, very soon we'll be getting out of this world and there'll be terrible things happening. But God's compassion and mercy is there. In these circumstances, we have to ask ourselves, what can I do? What can I do to remember the Lord? Well, in verse number 11, the, the psalmist tells us, I will remember the works of the Lord. This is a time to remember what God has done for us in the past. Remember how good he's been to us. Repeatedly through the Bible, you'll find God's children go through trials and tribulations, but God delivers them from, from all of them. The Bible says, there is, no hath, there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. God is still faithful. God is still good, amen. We remember the deeds of the Lord. Remember how he's blessed us in the past. Remember the miracles. You know, the prophet Jeremiah talked about that the problem Israel had and the reason why God was sending the trials and tribulations and even judgments their way is because they had forgotten God. He said in the book of Jeremiah that they had fullness of bread. They had all these things and yet they didn't seek the Lord. You know, we live in a time of technology. We're having this live uh, video cast and doing it on Facebook and eventually be going out on YouTube. And uh, we thank God for that, that we can at least do that. But we have so much. We have the internet, we have technology, we have more Bibles, we have more books available. 
And sometimes I think that because we have so much, it only leads us to do so little for the Lord. This is a good time to get back to the, the righteous path, get back to the old Bible way, to read God's Word, the King James Bible, to study it, to ask God to speak to us. You know, three times in this psalm, the psalmist says, Selah, which means stop, think about this, think about what I've just said. And I would, I would say this is a time to Selah, this is a time to stop and think, what is God saying to me? What does God want me to do? How can I draw closer to the Lord during this time? You don't have to worry about going out to work unless you're a key worker. You don't have to worry about even getting out your shopping. This is a good time to separate for the Lord. The people of Israel, their problem was they had too much. The Lord Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. We've got so much. We have so many things. What are we doing for the Lord? How are we drawing closer to him? We have to recall what God has done in the past. He talks about how God had delivered Israel. He took them out of Egypt. He took them through the Red Sea. He took them through the wilderness. He took them into the promised land. And he continued to be gracious. A good thing to do during this time. Verse number 11, Psalm 77, he says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, surely I will remember thy wonders of old. Me I said, I will, I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of all thy doings. You know, this is a good time to get to know the Lord, to spend the time to understand His attributes, His Word, to seek the Lord, to meditate on all God's work and consider all of God's mighty do deeds. Remember God. He says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, and who is so great a God as our God? Thank God our God is wonderful, amen. He's been merciful to me. He's been gracious to me. As we, as we close out the service today, we're going to be singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You know, I really believe this is a time for us to separate ourselves unto the Lord. Amen. That's what God wants us as Christians. God is calling out a people unto himself. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 and 13 says this. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. I honestly believe this is a time for God's people to separate themselves unto the Lord, to get close to the Lord, to draw that bit closer that we've never been before, amen, to, to put the Lord first in our life. Seek first the kingdom of God. God has never wanted us to be part of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. The book of John tells us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And we're to separate unto the Lord. God is calling himself a people unto himself. You know, it's interesting that before the, the first uh, coming of the Lord, uh, almost 2000, just about 2,000 years ago, the Lord sent a man called John the Baptist. And what he was sent for was to prepare a people that were ready for the Lord. And I believe the Lord's coming is very soon. And this is a time where God is allowing God's people to prepare to separate for the soon coming of the Lord. How can we do that? We can remember what God has done. We can remember that God's ways are holy. You know, God is a merciful God, but God is also a righteous God. God is a God of love. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have, a, have everlasting life. God is a gracious God, but he's also a holy God. He's a righteous God. And the Bible says that we have to remember our God is a consuming fire. God is coming. Amen. He's coming. There's no, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. That's a good thing to remember during this time. God is faithful. Has he been faithful to you? Has he been merciful to you? Has he been merciful to your family? Remember, he is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. How can you escape the lust of this world? How can you escape the, the corruption of this world? How can you escape... The economy of this world, 
by following the Lord, by drawing closer to him, by getting into his word, by allowing it to speak with us, allowing us to hear what God has said. Are you listening to God right now? Does God have a message for you? God is faithful. God's greatness is beyond the greatness of any of these gods or religions. All these false religions, their doors are closed. They have no message. But we have a great and a wonderful God. We have a God who's able to do all things according to his will. You know, the book of James has some good advice about how we should live our life. In James chapter 4, verse 13 through 17, it says this. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. For whereas you know what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. For the Christian, we don't live for ourselves. We don't live to buy and sell and get game. Remember what I said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, when the disciples were concerned about what they were going to eat, where they were going to live. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. It's not that all these things are evil and bad. It's not evil and bad to think to have a house over your head, to be concerned about your food, to be concerned about the clothes you wear, to be concerned about your family, your friends. It's not evil, but it shouldn't come before the Lord. Put the Lord first, and he will add all these things unto you. But James says to them, he says, all you who are saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go and buy and get sale and get gain. I'm going to do this with my life and that with my life. Whereas you ought to, to say, what is the Lord's will? What does God have, and have for me? You know, James says, this, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. You know, we're on this earth for such a short period of time. Such a short period of time. Jesus said, what shall it profit man if he gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. There are more important things. Than living for this world. The most important thing is to put God first in your life. Our life is just a vapor. It appears for a little time and then vanishes the way. How should we order our lives? James chapter 4 verse 15. For that you ought to say. If the Lord will. We shall live and do this or that. You know the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. I cannot guarantee that a Christian will not get this virus. I cannot guarantee that someone in your family won't get this virus. But what I can say, we should live our life according to the will of God. We should live our life according to what God wants in our life. We should put him first. Though no matter if we go through sickness or trials, we'll go through it with the Lord. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I will fear no evil. Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Whatever trial we go through, whatever things happen in this week, God is with us. God is right there. When we look at the world and we, we plan our lives, the Bible says that kind of boasting is evil. It's evil to put other things before the Lord Jesus Christ. James chapter 4, verse 7, therefore, 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do, to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. This is a good time to put the Lord first. This is a good time to read your Bible, the Word of God, the King James Bible. This is a good time to pray. This is a time where we can draw closer to the Lord. You know, God is good, amen. He's always been good. In trials and tragedies, he's always been good. God is still in control, amen. He's still in control. He's still God, as I said at the beginning. He's not gone on holiday. He's not gone away uh, to isolate himself in lockdown. God can go anywhere he wants. His spirit can go anywhere he wants. He's still in control. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, 6 says this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is working in our lives. God is working in the lives of our families. 
and he's going to continue to work until the day of Jesus Christ, and the day he comes, amen. Jesus said, occupy till I come. We are to be busy for the Lord. We are to put him first. A good way of doing that is remember who God is. Remember his attributes, his holiness, his, his omniscience. He knows all things. He's all power. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere. Remember that God has redeemed you. Remember that God has shed his blood for you, given you eternal life. He has not forsaken you now. Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, the Lord is that good shepherd. Amen. He is a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And sometimes he leads the sheep to different pastures so they can get better food, better greener grass. I believe that God has led us to those green pastures today. Today when we can get together, read our Bible and study it and ask, Lord, what are you saying to me? This is a good time to read the Bible. This is a time not to focus on what's going on in the world. L let me give you a little piece of advice. Don't watch the news all the time. Read your Bible. <coughs> Put the Lord first. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. The psalmist, by looking at the Lord, was able to refocus his life and able to see what was really important. And I believe this is the exact thing God wants us to do, amen. He wants us to focus on the things that are really important. And uh, God's grace and his mercy is what's really important today, amen. So I really appreciate this time we've been able to get together, amen. And I'd like to encourage you to sing our song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How just did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come this grace hath brought me saved thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be. As long as life endures. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, And mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil, a life of joy and peace. We've been there ten 
thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. Thank you for listening in. And as I said, if you have any prayer requests, you can message me them on my personal page or on the church page, and we'll be praying for you this week. And uh, during this week, I'm going to be bringing some devotionals. And on Thursday night, we're hoping to do another live uh, web stream, and also next Sunday. So as I said, remember us all in prayer. I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for each other. Uh, remember, the offerings can go through the church web page on, on the donate section, and that will go to help uh, our missionaries. And we want to continue to remember them. Amen. God's been good to us. And he's been generous to us. And the Bible said, God loveth a cheerful giver. So let's uh, continue to do that for the glory of God. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Not only through the webcast, but also in face. One to one. So we can rejoice in the Lord. Amen. The Lord is good. A stronghold in a day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Thank God. I'm not worried. I'm looking forward not to the undertaker but to the upper taker. The Lord's coming back. Maranatha. Praise God. Keep close to him. Amen. See you soon.